So welcome to this uh, new uh, segment, this new project that I've started uh, to uh, just get the juices flowing musically. It's my best top 20 songs year by year. And I'm starting off with 1965. I was uh, at the tender age of 11 years old. And uh, I did originally say I was going to only do 10, but it became so difficult I went to 20. So I'm going to do two videos on these. Um, the videos will go from 20 to 11 and then of course 10 to 1. I will have a little quick glimpse at each song, tell you a little bit about it, uh, tell you who's on it maybe, tell you maybe a little bit about the lyrics, tell you a little bit about why I love it. And uh, um, there will be also a link to a playlist in audio. Of course, I can't offer that uh, because of copyright. But if you are interested in having uh, the top 20, you can get in touch with me. Uh, make sure you check out my uh, final uh, frame with all my contact details on there. Uh, so you'll be able to uh, get that playlist if you want. Uh, all of the songs should be available on YouTube but of course I will conveniently put them all neatly together so it's like a chart show uh, and I'll also be interested to know uh, what ones uh, you may have chosen that didn't make the top 20 so before we get on to that f famous top 20 this gives you an indication of the, the songs that didn't make it. Well, um, at that particular moment in musical history, 1965, of course, uh, we were inundated with uh, quality from the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and uh, the Kinks from the UK. Just to give you some idea of the ones that didn't make it, uh, the Beatles, Girl... Dave Tripper, Nowhere Man, Michelle, We Can't, We Can Work It Out, uh, As Tear Go By, um, Heart of Stone from the Rolling Stones, and then uh, a few from the Kinks, Set Me Free Till the End of the Day. Now you can add in a few others, uh, Tamla Motown, Stop in the Name of Love by Sue Dreams, I Can't Help Myself, The Four Tops. And uh, Unchained Melody, not Motown, but certainly a brilliant song, Righteous Brothers. And then The Beach Boys, Help Me Rhonda. And then, uh, to tidy us over, In the Midnight Hour by Wilson Pickett. And them, Van Morrison's band, Here Comes the Night, who could forget that. And finally, some cute little uh, songs that scored big in the pop charts from uh, artists that are less famous I Got You, you Babe Sonny and Cher Rescue Me from Fontella Bass and Unit 4 Plus 2 Concrete and Clay their only recorded piece of work and it was a number one smash so those are the ones that didn't make it so let's now get started with the first, and it's number 20 in my top 20 for 1965, and it's Go Now by the Moody Blues. This was originally recorded in January 1964 by Bessie Banks, but Denny Lane, the guitar player and singer with the Moody Blues, was really taken by it and wanted to record it, and that was duly happened in 65. It really... Uh, was a beginning phase into progressive rock it had some nice uh, instrumentation and it was also very much akin to some of the baroque elements that were filtering into pop music and I think it's a great song uh, it's about breaking up with someone you love of course and uh, although Lane didn't hang around much he moved on uh, to work with McCartney this was a big hit for the movie Blues, and it's at number 20. In at 19 is For Your Love by the Yardbirds. Now this was written by Graham Goldman, who later became famous 
uh, as a, a recording artist and musician with 10cc uh, but at this moment in time he was really just writing songs and uh, he wrote this one for the Yardbirds and it was their first top 10 hit uh, and it was very much a different sound for the Yardbirds who'd grown up really as in blues music uh, and because it was a shift toward pop it didn't go down too well with the guitar player uh, his name was Eric Clapton by the way and not long after this he left um, to be replaced by uh, Beck I think and anyway they recorded uh, For Your Love and uh, the band had uh, Brian Auger on harpsichord which is quite prevalent twin guitars Clapton and Chris Jaya and of course Keith Ralph was the singer uh, so it went down very very well and of course lyrically well it's a, just a simple self-explanatory song for your love and number 18 is the last time by the Rolling Stones uh, this was a, their first UK single hit written by Jagger and Richard prior to this they'd done uh, uh, copies of uh, other blues standards uh, Anyway, they, this was recorded in California at Hollywood and uh, uh, it was a really a, a, a readapting of a gospel song uh, sung by the Staple Singers uh, but they didn't want to use it so uh, the Rolling Stones adapted it and it was a huge hit. Um, it had a sort of influence from Phil Spector's Wall of Sound production on the recording and he also chipped in with some assistance. Lyrically it's another tale of the pain in splitting up and uh, Brian Jones uh, played the main riff on this one uh, and uh, Keith chipped in with the solo in the middle. What a fucking great song. Sorry about my language. So to 17 then this is Do You Believe in Magic by The Loving Spoonful. They were a real sort of hippies uh, band's dream, led by John Sebastian, and this uh, track was written by John. Um, the song's reference caused a little bit of uh, uh, interest, um, but it was basically more about the power of music to supply happiness and freedom to both those who make it and those who listen to it. Um, the idea that it was something to do with some drug-induced LSD trip. Not true. Great song though. Love it. In at 16 is The Kinks Tired of Waiting For You. Um, Ray Davis wrote this one on a train apparently uh, on the way to a recording studio and he started it on the train and ended up finishing it in the coffee shop uh, doing a break in the sessions what an amazing story uh, the lyrics well I've been there wa wanting a girl but it ain't reciprocated and you have to move on that's my take on it and it's uh, pretty much clear cut really uh, so that's tired of waiting at number 16 so to 15 then this is a really rousing song it's called Baby Please Don't Go and it's by them. Any of you that aren't familiar with them, it's the first band which launched the career of 19 year old Van Morrison and he really does look like a cutie. Uh, it was a traditional blues song popularized by Delta blues musician Big Joe Williams back in 1935 but it came to the fore in 53 when Muddy Waters recorded the song in Chicago in the famous uh, Chicago studios. Uh, it influenced many adaptations and uh, Van Morrison decided that he wanted to get in on the act and his version was probably more closely linked to John Lee Hooker's uh, that was recorded in 1948 uh, that was called Don't Go Baby but it was virtually the same song and uh, um, who was involved on the session? Well there's a bit of conflict here uh, about uh, the uh, importance and influence of one Jimmy Page. Um, there's no doubt he was actually at the session, but we're a bit unclear about how much he had to do with the playing. Um, some suggest that he played rhythm guitar uh, and uh, doubled on a bass riff, uh, but we're not entirely sure. But Van Morrison did confirm he was there. 
So, that's number 15. Please don't go. Number 14, a lovely song. I love this one. It's a real dance song. Sweet Talking Guy by the Chiffons. Uh, very much uh, uh, influenced by uh, the Phil Spector Wall of Sound. All those early 60s uh, girl bands that Phil Spector was famous for. And it's basically a little warning uh, to girls to beware, beware, beware of those guys who deliver false premises. It's a great dance record. At number 15 is the infamous Ticket to Ride. Uh, it became the Beatles' seventh consecutive number one in the UK and their third consecutive number one in the States. Uh, it was on the Help album written by John Lennon of course uh, the sustained A chord over the verses creates a, a drone like Indian sound and it supported a melody that the author Ian MacDonald referred to as Raga like uh, the track's heavy sound uh, it was also suggested that it might be influenced by Lennon and Harrison's uh, first uh, ren uh, involvement an encounter with LSD. Uh, precise date for this varies depending on Beatles biographers. Um, McCartney uh, said the title referred to a British railway ticket to the town of Ryde on the Isle of Wight. However, Je John Lennon thought it had more to do with cards that uh, indicated a clean bill of health for prostitutes on the Reaper bomb in Hamburg in the 60s. The main guitar riff was played by Harrison on his Rick and Becker 12 string guitar. And as for the lyrics, well, it, I'm sure it's about the girlfriend, but is she leaving for the Isle of Wight or is she leaving for Hamburg? At number 12, I Can't Get No Satisfaction. This was written by Jagger and Richard and produced by Andrew Lou Oldman. Uh, Oldham. Richard's guitar riff in, intended to be replaced by horns, but it wasn't, and it drives the song. The lyrics refer to sexual frustration and commercialism, and the Stones had their first number one in the U.S. Who can ever forget it? In the U.K., the song initially was played only on pirate radio stations because its lyrics was considered too sexually suggesting. The lyrics to this were truly threatening to an older audience apparently. This song was perceived as an attack on the status quo. Mick Jagger said it was the song that really made the Rolling Stones big. It changed us from just another band into a huge monster. And it has a very catchy title of course. A very catchy guitar riff uh, and in fact a great guitar sound which was very original at that time. It captured the spirit of the times which is very important uh, in those kinds of songs. And uh, it's a true classic. Uh, Jack Nietzsche on piano and tambourine. Um, well, as I've said, it's really a, a dig at commercialism and uh, all the lies and how it leaves you feeling unsatisfied. So to number 11. And this is the famous Bob Dylan track, Like a Rolling Stone, from the album Highway 61 Revisited and it also became uh, a, a hot selling signal, single and this was uh, a bit of a departure from the folk singing uh, acoustic guitarist um, as he went electric and it caused a lot of controversy and uh, the song has been described as revolutionary in its combination of electric guitar licks with organ chords and of course Dylan's uh, unique voice. Uh, the band had electric guitar player Mike Gloomfield and Al Cooper uh, uh, playing this song and they were pretty infamous in their own right. Uh, it apparently took ages to uh, complete this song uh, and uh, um, became a, a huge hit and it's certainly one of my favourites. It's a stark reminder of how even the rich can fall on hard times, uh, Dylan becoming more and more political. <laughs> 